we're asked to find the limit of the sequence given by a sub n. Looking at the theorem below, if a sub n equals the function f of n, and the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x equals l, then a sub n converges to l, and the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n equals l. So this theorem is telling us we determine the limit of a sequence the same way we determine the limit at infinity of a function. Instead of formally defining a function f of x, where f of n equals a sub n, we normally just let the formula for a sub n be equal to a function of n and determine the limit as n approaches infinity. So the limit of the sequence is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of cosine n divided by two raised to the power of n. And now to help us determine this limit, we'll look at what's happening to the value of the numerator and denominator as n approaches infinity. So focusing just on the numerator, we should recognize that the cosine function only has outputs on the closed interval from negative one to one, and therefore as n approaches infinity, it doesn't approach a particular value, but it will always have a value over the closed interval from negative one to one. And now let's look at the denominator. In the denominator, we have two raised to the power of n, so as n approaches infinity, we're raising two to larger and larger powers, and therefore two raised to the power of n approaches positive infinity as n approaches infinity. So now we need to figure out what's happening to the value of this entire fraction. If the numerator always has a value in the closed interval from negative one to one, and the denominator increases without bound. Well, this fraction is going to approach zero from both the positive and negative side, since the numerator can be either positive or negative. And therefore, this limit is equal to zero, which means the sequence a sub n converges to zero. This means, as we use this formula to generate more and more terms in the sequence, the value of the terms will approach zero. To verify this, let's look at the graph of the sequence a sub n. So we have n along the horizontal axis and a sub n along the vertical axis. And notice how, as we generate more and more terms in the sequence, the value of the terms do approach zero from both the positive side and the negative side. So this graph does verify the sequence does converge to zero. I hope you found this helpful.